Greetings and welcome to In-Depth MDK Rasta. Now, recently there has been a great deal of work being done in terms of policy, consultation, getting information of how we treat individuals in our society and in our workplace who have HIV and AIDS. One of the persons who has been at the forefront of that work being done is the chairperson of the National AIDS Coordinating Committee out of the Office of the Prime Minister. She also wears the hat of the HIV Workplace Advocacy Unit within the Ministry of Labour. She's the manager there. We are speaking of none other than Heather Rodney, and we are going to be speaking with her shortly. Ms. Rodney, how you do? I am fine, and thanks for having me. Definitely our pleasure. Thank you for making the time, because I know you've been in Trinidad, you've been in Tobago, you've been about the place. But even before we start to bear down into policy and some of the work that has been done, uh, give us an overview, please, because, uh -huh. yes, I know about NAC a little bit, or I've, I've found out a little bit about NAC, but the the HIV Workplace Advocacy Unit within the Ministry of Labour. What is the, give us an overview mandate. What are some of the objectives, please? So thank you, DK. Now you say you know about the NAC, which is the National AIDS Coordinating Committee. Well, the HIV Workplace Advocacy Unit in the Ministry of Labour is one of the national implementing partners. So we have membership, on the National AIDS Coordinating Committee. And as the name implies, our focus is the workplace. And our mandate is to have the national workplace policy on HIV and AIDS adopted and implemented in all workspaces throughout HIV and AIDS. Our objectives are to reduce the amount of persons who may find themselves HIV positive, to reduce the issue of stigma, stigma and discrimination, or actually eliminate stigma and discrimination, and also assist with behavior change for persons. So persons who at this time are HIV negative can remain HIV negative. I like the fact that you say there's a, there's, there's a policy. So it seems as though a policy already exists. What are some of the gaps that lead to adoption not taking place or not taking place as quickly as you would like it to? So yes, in 2017, the National Workplace Policy on HIV and AIDS was approved by the Cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago. From 2018 to 2019, we conducted a year-long public awareness campaign. However, we still have a challenge in getting workplaces to agree to implement the workplace policy in their respective workplaces. But on a daily basis, we reach out to organizations, government, private sector, even the informal economy and civil society, and we work with their workplace representatives to have their individual workplace policies and workplace programs developed and implemented. I know sometimes you talk about contact information at the end of a of a of a conversation, but let me ask about it now, please, because you you spoke about different potential partners, different people that you can hold hands with. If there's a grouping yeah. that is listening or looking at this right now and they say, "I think we need some help with our rollout," I need I think we need to build some capacity or competence. How do they reach out to you, and what are some of the things that you can provide to them? Like, uh, we can give you X, Y, Z helping towards this. And there is a lot. So let me start with, we can be, information on the unit can be had through the ministry's website. However, you can call us directly on 299-0300 at extensions 2011 or 2012. In addition, you can call me directly at 462-5236. We have a lot of assistance we offer to our client organizations and stakeholders. We are a technical team and we take you from policy development to program development and implementation. In saying that, what I am 
to actually saying is that we assist you in developing your workplace policy. We assist you in developing your workplace programs. In the event when we establish the collaboration, we realize that your organization already has a workplace policy. We assist you in reviewing that workplace policy. We also help you um, to make contact with organizations to provide care, treatment, and support for employers and employees. We work with your representatives to also address the issue of the development of specific information, education, and communication material that can be shared among the employees of the organization. So quite a few services, and of course, all of our services are free of charge. Always nice to know. And you talk about being a technical team and there has been a level of implementation that has recently taken place. So there were two days at least. So what were those two days? And let's go through them, please, because I heard there was also some, there was also fact finding as well. So we speak about that after. Yes, because a lot of work has been taking place in the area of HIV. This week and this month, I should say, has been a very busy month for both the National AIDS Coordinating Committee and my unit at the Ministry of Labor. Let me start with the Coordinating Committee. At this time, and I'm speaking to you from Tobago this morning, because yesterday we conducted our third national consultation on the national policy for HIV and AIDS. We had a three-part series in-person public consultation. The first one was held in, at El Dorado on August 29th, the second at Coover, September the 7th, and yesterday in Tobago, yesterday was September the 14th. And that is just part of what we are doing. We are also having focus group sessions. Some are being conducted as I speak to you now. We are having specific sessions with the youth of our nation because we must get their implementation. And we are also going to have a virtual public consultation. So for those persons who are unable to attend in person, a virtual consultation is coming. That is to finalize the national policy on HIV and AIDS. It has been in the making for some time now. What we have at this time is a green paper that was laid in parliament in 2020. But as the country knows, things were um, put on a standstill with the COVID pandemic. So we are back up and running and we are looking to get that policy completed by the end of this year. When that policy is approved by cabinet, it will be the overarching policy for all policies and programs to address HIV and AIDS in the country. Again, I said it's been a very busy week and a busy month. So I come now to the Ministry of Labor and the HIV Workplace Advocacy Unit. And as I said earlier on, there is a national workplace policy. What our consultation held on Wednesday sought to address is input from stakeholders with respect to legislation to support HIV in general. So we had our stakeholders again, pulled from our multi-tripartite sectors, government, private sector. We had a good showing by our unions, um, employers association, the EOC, the ILO. It was a very well organized and conducted consultation. We had quite a few presentations and a lot of information was gathered. We are not finished because we are still inviting people via our website to give us information that can facilitate legislation to support HIV in general. And that is one of the things that we want to talk about when we return. Stay with us. We are speaking with a woman of many hats, Ms. Heather Rodney. We're talking about HIV AIDS and policies, how it is we deal with the persons around uh, in our workplace and on a national level. Stay with us, we'll return with more.
Welcome back. We are speaking with Ms. Heather Rodney, chairperson of the National AIDS Coordinating Committee out of the Office of the Prime Minister, as well as the manager for the HIV Workplace Advocacy Unit within the Ministry of Labor. And you said you're still trying to find, you're still trying to get information that will go into this national policy, Ms. Rodney. And there are two surveys that are still ongoing, apparently. Yes. Uh, this is with respect, again, to the Ministry of Labor's HIV Workplace Advocacy Unit. We believe that any implementation of programs to address HIV must be data-driven. That means we need to have information to know in which direction we should go. So at this time, our unit is actually participating in not one, but two groundbreaking surveys. The first is what we commonly call a KPB service. This is where we are trying to get the knowledge, attitudes, practices, and beliefs to watch HIV in the workplace from employers and employees throughout Trinidad and Tobago. So the ministry has engaged as consulting team, and we are in the process of gathering that information. Of course, it is going to influence any future programs we develop to address HIV in the workplace. Also, we found that during COVID, COVID brought a lot, a lot of eye-opening scenarios to us as people of Trinidad and Tobago. And what we found was that Mental health was an issue that came to the forefront during the COVID pandemic. So what we have done at our unit, Ministry of Labor, my staff and I, we put together a, a, a proposal which was approved. And as we speak, we are conducting a mental health and HIV survey. The participants of this survey come from persons who are HIV positive and who are employed. We are also collaborating with this survey or on this survey with the director of the Medical Research Foundation, Dr. Edwards, and psychiatrist, Dr. Hodgkinson. So we are gathering information as to how persons who are employed and who are unfortunately HIV positive how are they treated with the mental health issues that can come about due to their status? Why the reason for the survey? And I ask this, uh, and not even tongue in cheek, because, and like you said, COVID, the pandemic has been an eye opener. And one of the things, one of the positives to me that has come out of the pandemic is that mm -hmm. it seems as though seeking mental health is a little less stigmatized. It's something that we're speaking about more. We're realizing that you can look at someone and not know what is going on within them. And yes. even let the decentralize the move to decentralize uh, areas or so spaces is. where you can access mental health services is something that has been pushed a little more to the fore. But what was that yes. thing that said, yes, we need to do this because sometimes things just ex ex exist in the realm of talk and, you know, that might be a good idea. But until yeah. like that actual driver, what was the driver? And the driver, again, was the COVID pandemic. Lots of people may not have known that the key, one of the key groups affected by the pandemic and by the lockdown as a result of the pandemic were persons who were HIV positive. There were persons who lost their job. Persons who are HIV positive have to have proper diets in order for your medication to work for you. Proper diet, you need to have the money to purchase the proper diet, and therefore you need to be employed. Then there were persons who had challenges going to get their medication. So during that time, we had a lot of persons who were HIV positive contacting us for help. People were scared. People were wondering the advances they made based on staying on treatment. Is that going to now step backward? Are they going to now revert to being seriously ill? And these are issues that people will take on. So people were contacting us, what do I do? So we realized people who are HIV positive can, if situations um, face them, can have mental issues. 
as a result of scenarios. And hence the reason the team at the Ministry of Labor's HIV Workplace Policy Unit decided, let us look at how persons who are employed and who are HIV positive treat with mental health issues. And I'm wondering, how do you plan to take the information from that and move it into the national survey? Or is that for a distinct and separate purpose? Well, they are two separate surveys, but it is one unit. And therefore, when the reports from both surveys come in, we are going to take them apart. And what they are going to offer us is ideas to what's treating, not just with the, the information about people's attitude towards HIV and AIDS, but the attitude to people who may be having mental challenges in the workplace as a result of HIV and AIDS. So it is going to be two pronged. Some information will allow us to address things individually and others jointly. So we really look forward to the compilation of the findings of those two surveys. And not to preempt those findings, but is what is the biggest gap that you see thus far? And I, I, I'm very grateful to be able to have this conversation with you, head of a unit that is technical, you're because you, you, you're looking at quantitative evidence, you're looking at qualitative okay. evidence. You have yes. people who are talking about the fact that those soft skills, they, you may call them soft, but they're so necessary in terms of how it is we treat with each other. And then even yeah. practical ways of being so that it's not as, so we, so we, the entire body or the entire collective moves forward. But what is the biggest gap or the biggest challenge that the policy will be trying to address at this point? We want to address the issue of implementation. As I told you, the unit is treated with the entire country, but we still have a challenge where some employers do not see HIV as a workplace issue. That's your personal take. Say about it. Don't bring it to us. We don't have time for it. So, <laughs> excuse me. So we approach workplaces who tell us, come back and come back. And this is a high peak season for us. So could you come back in three months time? But we are not giving up because we need to address HIV in the workplace. Another sticking point is testing for employment, testing in order to access the workplace benefits, Test, testing for promotion. That is still going on. And therefore we need, we have continuous work to address those issues. And inside of that continuous work, there are a great deal of activities that you're doing. So you just spoke about two that would have happened on the 13th and 14th. What are some of the other things that we are looking forward to? And any other closing words in a, in a minute and a half that we have remaining? Okay. So as I said, we are tying up both the surveys. Or I should say we are conducting both those surveys and we are tying up the national consultations and focus group with key informants with the youths and so on. The other thing the National AIDS Coordinating Committee is doing at this time is finalizing the national strategic plan for Trinidad and Tobago for the years 2024 to 2028. Again, overarching plan where the policy would fit in and in that plan, you would see who are all the movers and shakers, as we say. So everybody who has a role towards responding to HIV in the country, they would be ident clearly identified and their roles and responsibilities will be clearly identified. So I would know as a manager and the chairperson of the National AIDS Coordinating Committee, what is my role? And you know what? You, as a member of the media, would also know what is your role. So it's very interesting times with, as it relates to addressing HIV and AIDS for the entire country. So a lot of hard work, but we are up for the challenge and we are getting the work done. I mean, thank you for your service. And in 
thank you for once again spend making the time to spend with us chairperson of the national policy well the national aids coordinating committee as well as hiv workplace advocacy unit manager within the ministry of labor Ms. heather rodney and on behalf of the entire ttt news team i'm dk roster this has been in depth with me thank you so much for joining us